It is the first phase of elections today, the biggest phase and the focus though is on the southern state of Tamil Nadu where all 39 Lok Sabha seats are going to vote. Besides this, several seats from Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Uttarakhand, West Bengal, Arunachal Pradesh and Assam, of, of course Bihar as well are also going to vote. Our reporters are spanned across the country getting you the pulse of voters in different states. Let me go straight to Tamil Nadu where Sam Daniel is joining us. He's joining us live from Chennai. Sam, what are you witnessing? It's been an hour already since the polling began. That's right. Uh, I come to you from the SIET College in South Chennai constituency. Voters are gradually trickling in, if Suresh could show the situation here. This is a prestige seat for all political parties. This includes the Chennai's IT corridor, also the commercial hub of Tinagar and the film industries, uh, film industries hub uh, of uh, Kodambakam or Vadapalani as you call it. And uh, last time Tamil Nadu witnessed 72% voter turnout. We'll have to wait and see how it will be this time being a long weekend. But we could see youngsters in particular uh, trickling in in good numbers and we may get the percentage of the first one hour in a short while from now it's a four cornered contest uh, technically in tamil nadu between the ruling dmk the opposition aia dmk the bgp and also another party called the nam tamil kachi which over the last few elections has been fighting uh, on its own regularly but technically or practically the fight is between the top three parties dmk the aia dmk and the bgp in this constituency, the DMK has fielded the sitting MP, Tamilachi Tanga Pandian. The AIADMK has fielded the former MP, Dr. Jayavarthan. The BGP has fielded the governor-turned-politician, Tamilese Saundara Rajan. The key fight is essentially between these three people. The issues are generic. For example, for people, it's issues like price rise, the price of uh, petrol, diesel, LPG, and essential commodities. It's also things like employment opportunities for them and the response of the state and central governments particularly uh, in during the time of floods this particular constituency suffered very badly during the uh, cyclone and the heavy floods later and these are the common issues people find it important of course it's a parliamentary election and they also look at the national uh, at an, through a national perspective or through a national prism okay and for the political parties the ruling dmk has taken up issues like federalism the rights of states and what it calls as financial discrimination by the central government the aia dmk is also taking up the issue of state rights it's hoping that the anti-incumbency as it calls it would help it okay uh, for the aia dmk it's also special for another reason this is the first election under the singular leadership of ida party swami he hopes yes. he'll be able to we will discuss more of politics, but let's try and set it up for our viewers as to what are we witnessing at the moment. I can see Vira Raga joining us as well, but let me go straight to Bastar from where Nikunj Garg, our senior managing editor, is on Ground Zero. Nikunj, coming to you, when the polling begins at 7 a.m., what are the preparations which are there before the polling in terms of a polling agent? of various political parties and the officials, what exactly happens? Just set it up for our viewers and of course tell us what's happening on Ground Zero Bastar. Well, Maria, unfortunately, I can't uh, currently show you the tribal areas of this constituency. Remember, this is a, this is a constituency with multiple hues. Uh, almost all challenges of voting in a democracy like India of multiple uh, colors, denominations, populations are available in this one seat. This is a seat where I, currently where I am, is the biggest city of this seat, Jagdalpur. Then uh, there are Mao, large tracts of Maoist dominated areas to the south of where I am standing. To the north, there are, there's an agriculture belt, tribal population again, uh, multiple areas I visited before the polling, as you said. People from uh, at around 6.45 a.m. itself, a large number of tribals queuing up to vote. Uh, security forces, if my cameraman can just pan you, this is the city of Jagdalpur. Remember, uh, the Maoist threat here 
not so much uh, as intense as in other parts you can see in this in this place also the presence of the security force is significant remember this is one constituency maria where there has been never been an election whether it is a lok sabha election whether it has been a state assembly election which has been completely violence free there has been no violence free election at least in the last 20 years in this constituency so much so that the entire le state leadership of the congress party was wiped out during one political rally when they were trying to exit this very place bastar and jagdalpur uh, a few years back in a maoist attack currently as you can see in this place in jagdalpur at least huge enthusiasm this is just about 8 am and i haven't seen this kind of activity in city booths where one generally covers election but in this area of course we have to remember that uh, voting happens in two phases one in the morning and then later in the evening uh, latter half of the day because the, during the day it becomes extremely hot currently also the temperature would be touching somewhere around 40 degrees inside it will be hotter uh the big the bigger issue of course here is that this is also if one can describe it, describe it in that fashion prestige battle between the uh, bjp and the congress party both mr rahul gandhi and the prime minister himself mr narendra modi have done one rally each squared off with each other congress party has uh, set up a multiple uh, term mla of its kawasi lakma as its candidate very strong in the south of this constituency primarily the tribal dominated naxal dominated areas where this just just 48 hours back a massive encounter took place according to the state at least 30 naxals were killed there are certain counter allegations as well i will let's not get into them right now from yes, the bjp uh side there was a titan of a leader mr baliram kashyap whose son was a sitting leader here whose son was a sitting mp bjp replaced him brought in another mr kashyap who is a greenhorn but extremely confident saying that after the after the june 4 counting uh, mr lakma would know who is actually the stalwart in these areas and it's the popularity of the prime minister narendra modi in these areas in this belt that uh, mr kashyap thinks will completely swing the election is in its favor one thing i can tell you that in terms of the campaign domination in terms of the ground presence uh, bjp has a formidable presence i traverse around 4 to 4 to 500 kilometers from raipur to travel to this belt yesterday evening and all over it was just the bjp and in any case the bjp has had traditionally had a formidable organization strength which organizational strength which it has now tried to pool together bring up you know all the frontal organizations like the vishv hindu parishad la bajrang dal and uh, any other student organizations like abvp together and then uh, in on the in the face of it is a weakened congress remember there is still a large amount of anti incumbency or angst against mr bhupesh baghel's government which was voted out just after one term so quite clearly uh, the bjp has a formidable chance according to the most neutral observers however uh, it is for not us to comment at this stage let us see how things pan out okay before i let you go nikunj i can see a long queue of women behind you very very promising uh, visuals coming uh, early morning uh, in terms of comparison if you were to make oh, we can see you know oh, women it's all women actually up. maria yes the Yes, they they all women actually surprisingly in this queue they all women and actually and 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 I can ac actually show you something very interesting the election commission has made uh, in the Bastar itself there's a selfie booth this is amcho vote amcho bastar i my sense is my vote my bastar uh, and my vote for my bastar and this is a selfie booth and people are, have been actually very enthusiastically uh, taking part in this and one thing i must say that i went to uh, uh, around uh, around 20 kilometers inside from jagdalpur which is deep inside the terrible uh, tribal territory and election commission's preparations have been fairly robust my sense is that the uh, the betterment of the state apparatus in these areas and better betterment of the uh, wherewithal available to the election commission has been put to good use by the commission and if you see the polling agent from both the sides you also see the presence of a committed bunch of election commission officials trying to ensure complete neutrality and impartiality and i i would say one small thing which i have been thinking this morning that there is a lot of talk of you know democracy downsliding in india it would do a lot of good to the observers who have been writing this i am not saying that they are wrong or right what they, who have been writing this to come to these far flung remotest parts of this country and see the voter enthusiasm and see the neutral empire election commission of india's preparedness and preparations in trying to ensure a free and free free fair and impartial vote and then probably they would be in a better position to comment on all such things is my sense 
uh, of uh, of observing things here since late last evening mare all right uh, nikun gar appreciate your time let me bring in veera raghav as we look at those visuals coming in from uh, uh, exactly which constituency veera veera will be perhaps able to explain to us veera which is this constituency where rajni khan has gone to cast his vote Uh, it's not a constituency it's a polling booth maria it's the stella maris polling booth in the chennai south constituency we just had him coming in and cast his uh, vote there you see the media meli there uh, he's not a politician he's not in demand politically but uh, you see that media frenzy there that's rajnikant for you in chennai city we've all been waiting for him uh, to come down here and cast his vote often known to have made some political statements but staying away from all of it right now he's come and cast his vote uh here at the stella maris uh, uh voting booth here yeah, where we've been waiting since morning remember maria it's 8 a.m but it's already hot and sultry and sweaty here in chennai so you've got the rajnikant vote being cast you'll get the other top political leaders of the state casting their vote in a bit from here remember urban apathy is an important issue in constituencies like this we got a lot of old timers traditional voters come down here remember this is one of the affluent areas one of the sought after polling booths in the city uh, jalalita used to live here the late jalalita used to cast a vote here we expect sashikala to come down and cast a vote here a bit away from here on the other side of the road in a polling booth nearby you used to have the late m karunanidhi go and cast his vote we expect danidhi maran to be casting his vote there so this is the heart of chennai chennai south you saw all that uh, drama playing out here with the media jumping around trying to get that one sound bite of rajnikant or perhaps some statement down there he didn't make any he's just come cast his vote and has left maria and but those visuals you know there has been uh, decades of uncertainty or or an Im, uh, or an impending political debut of rajnikanth and he has always brushed that and in every election we talk about it veera why do we do that that's right that's because he sells uh, that's because it sells and, and you know there's been pressure on him so often but i think this election is different i think after the last time of jumping in and wanting to come in and then pulling off uh, last minute before the assembly elections i think i think i think that does the that settles the deal he's been reluctant he is often said he's left everything to god and i guess that's the path that he's chosen it's uh, it's perhaps us as well uh, you know he gives you trps he gives you the eyeballs when you mention rajnikant it works look at me standing here at stella maris polling booth trying to wait for him and uh, you know he's not even a political player at the moment in this state so i guess it's got a lot to do with us as well as him in terms of the stardom and the fan following i don't think one has that kind of fan following here plus the fact that this state has been intricately intertwined with film stars and politics there's been a quest for a hero uh, since the passing away of j j lalitha and m karunanidhi remember that was the dominant factor and that's what the bjp is trying to focus on they wanted to project anna malai as that local hero there uh, here Mar yeah whether it works or not we'll know on the 4th of june but that's the strategy of trying to create that rags to riches story and project him on the one side uh, you have the ideological battle between the dmk bjp playing out on the other you have the dmk ai dmk battle playing out at the grassroots remember there's also the test of loyalty to that two leaves symbol which has an emotional connect at the grassroots in tamil nadu for 40 years it's dominated the space down there so you got the rising sun and the two leaf symbol more than candidates and personalities these symbols uh, are extremely important in the state and that's what the bjp is trying to break through this time we'll have to wait and see how that experiment plays out maria and we are running They those visuals of rajnikanth again, Rajni Kant Kant again on our television happen, screens it's a fascinating state uh, and perhaps the entire spotlight of this election has been on tamil nadu and in, on on southern india we really appreciate your time we'll be shifting focus to our uh, experts in just a bit but before that harsha ma'am bright and happy early morning good to see you uh, but before that before uh, uh, before i bring in the experts i want to understand from you uh, what does it look like early morning in jaipur can but i definitely have rajyavardhan rathod and he is going to be coming in to vote uh, he is also an olympian and uh, a silver medalist so i hope he'll do this morning uh, well let me just give you a sense of how the voting is happening you can see 
uh, lots of people here uh, lining up in fact outside the booth and uh, I was just waiting for him there so I'm just uh, rushing in to give you a sense of uh, all these people here they've lined up since morning uh, uh, you know, ni uh, nice. I mean, it's it's kind of picking up pace. Let me just ask some of them. आप अभी वोट डालने जा रहे हैं? हाँ जी. क्या संदेश है लोगों के लिए? वोट डालना जरूरी है. जरूरी है सर. So you know, lots of people here lining up. आपका क्या मैसेज है? मैसेज ये है पूरा पूरा सब लोग वोट डालो. 100 परसेंट वोट डालने की कोशिश करो. अच्छा. और देश को अच्छे भविष्य की तरफ ले जाओ. Uh, I also have a young lady I met uh, earlier in the day. She's a first-time voter. So, ये uh, first-time voter है. आप first-time voter हैं? Yes. हाँ. आप पहली बार vote डाल रहे हैं? Yes. कुछ message आप देना चाहेंगे? No. <laughs> it's important to vote. Yeah, I guess. So, uh, first-time voter. You can see lots of people here lined up uh, to uh, vote in um, Rajasthan. It's it's actually really picking up. And Maria, I have also cast my vote uh, uh, today. So, early in the morning, I managed to, uh, you know, get in the queue and vote in between all the lives. But yes, Rajasthan is uh, the first phase of voting is seeing about 12 seats going into uh, the polls. A lot of them are uh, interesting seats. Arjun Ram, Meghwal, big face. Holding on to the seat of Bikaner, Bhupendra Yadav stepping into grassroots democracy and politics. First time fighting a Lok Sabha election, otherwise been a Rajya Sabha organization man. And of course the Jat heartland, where key contests in uh, Nagaur, Seeker and Churu. Which way will the Jat vote go? That's a very, very big um, factor in this election. Political pundits looking out for that. Uh, so all that and more as we wait here for Rajivardhan Singh Rathor. Uh, the MP who fought the MLA election, who's going to come and vote here at this polling booth. And uh, how fascinating, um, Harsha ma'am, that before you came uh, for reporting, you actually went to cast your vote. So that, that's certainly inspirational for all those who have been saying that they can get lazy or afford to get lazy on such a crucial day. So yes, so let's go full frame with that, with Harsha ma'am actually showing that finger that mark which actually decides who will be our next next uh, representative yes how fascinating how fascinating that is thank you so much and uh, let me bring in the guests now nishtha gautam is joining us here in the studio we also have sogata srinivas uh, raju uh, nishtha what are you looking for and what does this day mean for you as a journalist as someone i'm sure who has covered multiple elections well, Maria, I'm wearing uh, new clothes and I always do. This has been a practice since childhood, wearing new clothes on the day of uh, elections because it is a festival. It is a festival like no other. And uh, it is a festival that empowers us. It is a festival that symbolizes the power of the people, the common person who for five years remains forgotten. But on this one day, this is all powerful you know wherever it'll go and land is going to make all the difference and i really really feel chuffed about elections about polling and i get excited like a little child me um, too i will also say that i'm extremely excited about election days yeah because you know uh, maria at a philosophical level you know yes. this is this is one day this is one day where you actually get to exercise your power as an individual the power of the vote which has been given to us we gave ourselves this power and we often forget hmm. you know there is a lot which is lacking in our democracy and our democratic systems but it is only us it is this finger that can actually fix the problems that we keep lamenting about who is going to change it for us nobody we are going to change it for ourselves and, and this is what actually it means, uh, you know, Nishta. Early morning in NDTV studio, you are there bright and happy, uh, wearing new clothes. We also have uh, Mr. Srinivas Raju. Uh, thank you so much for speaking to NDTV and welcome to the special broadcast. Uh, thank you. Mother. You know, it's important because there's a lot of spotlight on southern India. 39 seats go to polls in these elections in Tamil Nadu alone. Uh, Everybody seems to be trying to understand this puzzle called that state, which has been so far dominated by the Dravidian parties. At the end of this day, because the polling has started, it's already one and a half hours. What, what is it that you will be watching for, uh, out for as an expert in the, on the state? Thank you, Maria. 
See, this election, one of the big themes this election has been North versus South. Hmm. And that is the narrative that has been built up consistently over the last few months. Trying to say that the South is, uh, is not vulnerable to the BJP or the Saffron parties, except for Karnataka, of course. And uh, that is, has been kind of uh, being challenged by Narendra Modi. You know, in fact, this election is extremely important. I mean, I mean with, with Tamil Nadu at the center, because Mr. Modi, in the last uh, few months, and not just last few months, last few years, in fact, from 2014 on till, uh, you know, the last rally that he did in uh, Tamil Nadu, he has visited Tamil Nadu 30 times. Hmm. He has been relentless hmm. in the manner in which he has wooed the voters in Tamil Nadu. He has tried to see Tamil Nadu not just as a political challenge, Maria, but also as a cultural Absolutely. and civilizational challenge. You know, that is very, very significant because, you know, I mean, the, the Hindutva thing, the flatness that the Congress accuses, of the, BJ, accuses the BJP of, in the sense, trying to create one nation, one election, one kind of, uh, you know, I mean, uh, flatness with religion. All of that, the counterpoint exists in Tamil Nadu. Hmm. Tamil Nadu is seen as a dra the Dravidianism, you know, I mean, to a small extent, Punjab, of course. Hmm. But Dravidianism is seen as a complete counter to the Hindutva philosophy, Hindutva ideological positions that the BJP has been uh, positioning itself or, or propagating or, 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 or as, as embraced. But the far more significant thing from that from, is that Modi also has hmm. to do well in the South this time because I think... To ensure that number of 370. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a huge number or huge task that the BJP is aiming for. Uh, it remains to be seen, however, that whether... Southern India or Tam Tamil Nadu can actually be that breakout moment that we saw uh, Bengal and Odisha was in 2019 right. and of course the surprise numbers that came from Telangana as well. But let's go back to ground zero and this time uh, Amrit Anshi is joining us live from Madhya Pradesh. Remember the BJP had won all the seats in Madhya Pradesh except for one which is Chindwara. Uh, Chindwara is polling today and Amrit Anshi what are you seeing early morning? Uh, surely I'm uh, like present at the Shikarpur booth which is in Chindwara and Chindwara the most talk seat and the most hot seat of Madhya Pradesh uh, the only seat where Congress has been winning uh, like from uh, last 44 years uh, if we like uh, leave one election as you can see this is the booth where uh, Kamal Nath and his family just uh, casted their votes and here's a big line and uh, people are like coming here and they are very excited for uh, these elections they are excited uh, as this is the like we are celebrating a festival and they have their rights uh, today uh, to vote as an individual uh, we, uh, we have some people we'll talk to them that how much excited they are uh, to cast their vote uh, some young people also we have there kitna utsahit hain aap log vote dalne ke liye aaye hain bahut hai bahut hai sab kaam wagaira chhod kar aaye hain kya utsah hai subah se vote dalne ke liye vote dalne ke liye aap bataiye ye matlab aaj ke date mein berozgari aur kisano ke liye jo दिक्कत आ रही है इसलिए मतलब नकुल नाथ जी को जितना बहुत आवश्यक है अच्छा तो आप लोग विकास के मुद्दों पर वोट डाल रहे हैं जी We have like some uh, old age people also uh, यहाँ पर वो जो अपना आईडी कार्ड लेकर पहुँचे हुए हैं आप भी वोट डालने के लिए आए हैं वोट डालने के लिए आए मजदूर खोके इधर अच्छा मजदूरी छोड़ कर आए हैं जी हाँ अच्छा इतना इम्पोर्टेंट है वोट करना जी हाँ अच्छा कितना उत्साह रहता है एक दिन मिलता है पाँच साल में एक बार अब जी तक कौन ध्यान कर रहा दीदी अच्छा वोट डालना लेकिन जरूरी है जरूरी है आप फर्स्ट टाइम वोटर हैं क्या हाँ। पहली बार वोट हाँ। बहुत खुशी है बहुत अच्छा लग रहा हाँ। है कि कैसी फीलिंग है क्योंकि पहली बार आप लाइन में खड़े हुए अपना हाँ। वोटर आईडी लेकर पहुंचे हैं बहुत अच्छी फीलिंग आ रही है बहुत अच्छी फीलिंग है मतलब अपने फ्यूचर के लिए आगे के लिए वोट कर रहे हैं फ्यूचर के लिए वोट कर रहे हैं आप लोग क्या चाहते हैं कैसा फ्यूचर चाहिए मतलब क्या कितना विकास चाहिए अब आगे चल के देखेंगे क्या होता है अच्छा अच्छा सो लाइक वी कैन सी लाइक डिफरेंट कलर्स हेयर सम आर लाइक वेरी ओल्ड एज वोटर्स बट दे हैव लाइक कमिंग दे आर इन द लाइन्स फॉर वोटिंग देर आर फर्स्ट टाइम वोटर्स इन द स्मॉल बूथ ऑफ लाइक छिंदवाड़ा सो इट्स काइंड ऑफ एक्साइटमेंट इन द पीपल ऑफ छिंदवाड़ा एंड बिकॉज छिंदवाड़ा हैड द लाइक 
82 percent uh, voting percentage uh, in 2019, which was the highest percentage uh, all over Madhya Pradesh in the 29 Lok Sabha seats. So people are kind of excited and they are like coming uh, from, uh, since morning. There have been lines, long lines, queues here uh, to cast their vote, and uh, people are coming and like casting their votes in the favor of the development. They talk about development. All that right. They are voting on the uh, things like uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, Amritanshi, thank you so much. So, Chindwara, remember, withheld, stood against the Modi wave in 2014 and 2019 and had voted for the BJP. Uh, I would request all uh, the experts, Nishta and uh, Sogata, to continue to be with us. This remains our top focus here on NDTV. This is the biggest celebration of democracy, as we say, and also the world's biggest electoral exercise has begun. special broadcast where it is about celebrating the electoral exercise and the democratic process of India. With me here in the studio is Nishta looking all bright and she as she said that she is also wearing a new shalwar kameez because that's also a significant messaging which is happening today that this is about your right. That if you want to change representatives, that if you want to change your MPs and that you have uh, felt in all these years that they or he or she has not done his or her duty, then today is the day. 102 seats are polling even as we speak and these 102 seats are spread across 21 states and union territories and one such union territory is Jammu and Kashmir where Nazir is joining us. It's an important election for Jammu and Kashmir because this is for the first time it's polling since the abrogation of Article 370. Nazir is joining us live. Nazir, what are you seeing on ground? Nazir, if you can hear me. We'll try and connect with Nazir in just a bit. I can also see Manish, who's joining us, and also Vedant. Yes, please, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. so, so, well, here I'm in Kutwa, which is the gateway of Jammu and Kashmir. And here, despite the rains in the morning, people in large numbers are coming in at every polling station to cast their vote. Here you can see... Men, women, young and old, some come in, in, in wheelchairs to cast their vote. It is actually a festival here which comes only once in five years, unlike all other festivals from our diverse culture which we celebrate every year. But here, all these people waiting for their turn in these queues to cast their vote. And here, Dr. Jitendra Singh of the BJP is seeking third term. He is pitted against Congress's Chaudhary Lal Singh, who is also a two-time former MP from this area. There have been issues which are actually all around abrogation of 370 and BJP has been talking about how Jammu and Kashmir has been transformed and Vikas and uh, investment has come. But the Congress has been saying, look, post-abrogation of 370, it is something Jammu and Kashmir has lost everything, including land and job protection. That's what they have been talking about. And today people would decide and they have tried to make it a kind of a referendum. People would decide which way they are say, whether they have been happy or not. But the but important thing is that, that people here are very, very enthusiastic, uh, coming in large numbers to cast their vote. This is one of the largest constituency which is spread over, over 20,000 square kilometers. And very, very uh, positive sign, certainly, in Nazir, to see long queues early morning. It's uh, one and a half hours since the polling began. And those are the visuals coming in from uh, Tamil Nadu chief minister, actually, inside the polling booth, along with his spouse, are uh, going to cast their vote. He has just exercised his right. Sam, which is the spot? polling station where uh, the chief minister and his family went? Uh, Maria, that's the SIET college uh, polling station, part of the South Chennai constituency where Chief Minister MP Stalin and his wife Durga have just cast their vote and we expect uh, Stalin to address the press uh, in a short while from now. This is a kind of a prestige seat for any political party in Tamil Nadu, the Chennai South Parliamentary Constituency, which includes the Chennai's Showcase IT Corridor, 
the commercial hub of uh, Tinagar and also the Kolywood's capital, that's the Vadapalani area. And this is also the constituency which was badly affected during the 2023 cyclone and also the later floods. And uh, for people here, uh, of course, largely they look at this election through the prism of uh, national politics. Also on issues like price rise, the price of petrol, diesel, LPG and other essential commodities, employment. And also the way both the state government and the centre responded uh, to the aftermath of uh, the cyclone and, uh, uh, and the floods. The larger picture, it's a triangular contest, uh, Maria, in Tamil Nadu between the ruling DMK, the opposition, the AIADMK and the BGP, which is fighting alone this time as a third front without any major Dravidian allies. And uh, the, in this particular seat, the ruling DMK has fielded incumbent MP Tamilichi Tangapandian, who seeks a second term. The AIADMK has fielded the former MP Jayavardhan, Dr. Jayavardhan, and the, DM, the BGP has fielded uh, the governor turned politician, Tamilisai Saundararajan. If my indications are right, I think MK Stalin could be speaking to the press any moment now. And yes, he's coming uh, to the in just press a bit. Day. But before that, and, uh, uh, Srinivas Raju, a quick word from you on those visuals when we, which we are getting of Chief Minister uh, yes. and DMK Supremo at present, MK Stalin. What is at stake for Stalin in these elections? Well, there's a look. I mean, he is quite a dominant player there. I think, you know, I mean, he's, he's, he feels a lot more secure than any other uh, alliance which is fighting the elections in Tamil Nadu. He's certainly the front runner. I mean, that's all, that's, that's the indication that we get from the ground. But, uh, you know, I mean, he's also being severely challenged this time. You know, he's fighting the elections, uh, I mean, after the sweep in 2019. Now, whether Stalin will be able to retain uh, all these seats that he won last time. It was 38 and, uh, I mean, uh, as against 39, you know, with the th total 39 seats and he had won 38. So will Stalin be able to retain that is a very, very big question. And also, the other very important point is Mr. Stalin has emerged as some kind of a big brother to the Congress, nationally as well, because Rahul Gandhi has subsumed the ideology of the Congress to the Dravidian ideology, speaking of federalism, speaking of caste politics. And uh, so Stalin's win, uh, in a way, uh, is also going to reflect hugely on the Congress because the Congress may has sort of sought out uh, uh, the DMK, Stalin, and uh, their, I mean, uh, ideological positions to sort of forward their own antithesis to the BJP's Hindutva philosophy. So it's, it's, it's extremely crucial. And Stalin, as... You know, as of now, you know, I mean, he is dominating the scene there. He is bound to do well. And I think one of your uh, correspondents, I mean, I think Sam mentioned the floods and uh, uh, inflation and unemployment and stuff like that. I would pick on the floods to speak here because uh, that is that was a turning point in the recent months. Because when uh, people were suffering uh, and Stalin was reaching out to them, uh, Nirmala Sitaraman, who also sort of, you know, I mean, uh, partially hails from uh, Tamil Nadu because, you know, the other half is from uh, Andhra Pradesh. Uh, so she was uh, uh, not seen to be very responsive to the demands of Tamil Nadu. All so right. Those things, yeah, those things. All right. Have been Just hold on to your thoughts because we have to shift bit. focus to another state as well. And this is my state of Bihar where uh, Manish Kumar is joining us. Uh, remember Bihar, Uttar Pradesh and Bengal. These are three Indian states which will be polling in all seven phases. Manish is joining us live from Aurangabad constituency. What are you witnessing, Manish, early morning? Uh, unlike uh, my colleague Najir, who has got huge, you know, voters turnout, I am really, you know, here... Uh, there is something very disappointing and you know something you know cause of concern for almost uh, all the political parties especially bjp which is winning this seat since uh, 2009 because so far not even 10% voters have cast their votes uh, there are three polling stations at this particular polling station there are total 765 voters and so far uh, hardly 60 voters have come and cast their vote so 
and this is the urban area you know the aurangabad town and the uh, local mp who is uh, susil singh who is winning the seat since 2009 is next door he lives next door and it seems that you know they will have to really work hard to bring out the voters in the you know remaining 8 uh, 9 hours because uh, polling will continue here till 6 pm and now some bjp leaders are saying that the vo voting will pick up in the afternoon but of course the first uh, few phases because almost all the phases last time nda won 39 out of the 40 seats these are the four seats also being represented by nda since 2014 and rjd for the first time rjd has reached out to the you know non yadav muslim candidates uh, in this uh, round also local you know rjd candidate is from kuswaha community so they they are hoping that with their kind of social engineering they will be able to you know defeat bjp because uh, uh, there is kind of anti incumbency also but it's entirely dependent on the voters turnout whichever party brings out their voters their supporters in large numbers will ultimately you know uh uh be uh, emerge as a winner but it seems uh, maria very clearly that the last time the voting percentage in this round in this four seats also was below 60% and this time also it's uh, at least by the you know uh, uh, morning uh, trends it doesn't seem that you know this time the voting percentage will go up 60% maria All right uh, Manish thank you so much for joining us uh, let me get a word also from Vedant before i bring in Nishta here in the studio Vedant Alwar uh, is where you are that's the constituency from where union minister uh, Bhupendra Yadav is contesting it's a Yadav versus Yadav battle playing out in Alwar uh, in Rajasthan last time in 2014 or 2019 the BJP had won all seats hands down uh, what does the battle look like right now and but before that One hour, fifty minutes over. How? What are you seeing uh, at the polling booth where you are? Well, Mara, there were long queues here in the morning. That's how Rajasthan votes. You know, early morning people uh, come out in large numbers before the sun gets straight up. Uh, so there were long queues here. But of course, uh, you know, there was Balak Nath here as well, and we spoke to him, and he told NDTV that he's, you know, the BJP is eyeing for exactly that—a hat trick as far as maxing out those 25 seats are concerned. Let me quickly get in a word from some voters. So, आप आप लोग अपना वोट कास्ट कर रहे हैं। मैं पिछले तीन चार दिन में यहाँ पे रिपोर्टिंग करके समझ रहा हूँ पानी का मुद्दा सबसे बड़ा मुद्दा है अलवर में। यहाँ पर आज का वोटर किन मुद्द ये तो मुद्दा तो कई हैं पानी का मुद्दा तो लोकल मुद्दा है बेरोजगारी है महंगाई है और है घनी समस्याएं हैं सड़क हैं बच्चे बच्चे लोग परीक्षा देते हैं वो निरस्त हो जाती हैं एग्जाम पेपर, पेपर लीक भी बड़ा मुद्दा पे, है पेपर लीक बड़ा मुद्दा है तो ये सब होता ही है महिलाओं के क्या मुद्दे हैं मैडम यहाँ पर राजस्थान के जो महिला वोटर है क्या अच्छा क्या सोच कर आपने आज वोट दिया आपने वोट तो देते ही है सभी पानी की समस्या है ज्यादा बिजली की भी है पानी अच्छा, एक जल्दी से आप ये बात बताइए कि राजस्थान में अभी असेंबली इलेक्शंस भी हुए थे नेशनल इलेक्शंस में क्या देखकर इंसान वोट देता है कि बड़े चेहरे देखता है बड़ी मैसेजिंग जो नेशनल लेवल पे हो रही वो या लोकल मुद्दे देखिए ये मैन टू मैन डिफर करता है जो अच्छे वेल क्वालिफाइड है वो तो नेशनल मुद्दे बेसिक जो जो प्रॉब्लम्स है ना देश के अंदर उनको देख कर करता है बाकी आम हवा को जनता तो हवा में घूमती है कुछ चेहरा देखता है लेकिन बेसिक मुद्दे तो आज की तारीख में यदि माने जो तो भ्रष्टाचार महंगाई बेरोजगारी है ये मुद्दे है मेन तो यदिटेज कैंपेन भूपेंद्र यादव ललित यादव फ्रॉम द कांग्रेस एंड अलवर इंटरेस्टिंग अबाउट दिस बेल्ट इज दैट यू नो इट 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 द विंड ब्लोज हियर इन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द सेंटर दैट्स वॉट वी सीन इन द पास टेन ईयर्स रिमेन्स टू बी सीन दिस टाइम अराउंड वॉट है when we were on the campaign trail with bhupender yadav we exuded great confidence though some nervousness as well because it's his poll debut so keenly watched battle here in alwar all right and among the important battles is also the battle which is happening in arunachal west that's where union minister kiran rijuju is contesting from we'll be playing out those visuals because he has just exercised his right uh, in 2019 remember he had a secured a victory with uh, Two lakh twenty-five thousand seven hundred ninety-six votes, representing sixty-three percent of the constituency, uh, defeating uh, Nabam, uh, who who was a candidate of uh, the Congress Party, uh, Nabam Tuki, who had garnered a significant fifty thousand vote as well. So, 
he he had completely dominated this uh, constituency of uh, uh, arunachal west those are the visuals coming in of kiran rijuju uh, who actually went to cast his vote a quick word on northeast Maria, I'm so glad that you have uh, brought the discussion to Northeast, and uh, you talked about Arunachal Pradesh. But we have to uh, also remember that uh, Manipur, hmm. Inner Manipur, also goes to vote to today. Pose. Yes, right. More than 200 people have been killed since um, May 3rd, 2023. Right. There are, um, say, about more than 400 relief camps, and uh, the Election Commission of India has tried to. Um, to made uh, it easier for people who are living in these relief camps to exercise their right by setting up uh, special booths there but my question is people who have gone away to the neighboring states because they fear for their life right what are they going to do how are they feeling today that they are not able to exercise their right to vote they have lost practically everything they have lost family members they have lost their property they have lost dignity right and this this would have been one uh, uh, one way of reclaiming at least some of what they have lost hmm. right but they are not there because they fear uh, if they come back they'll be uh, penalized by um, not just uh, the seeming opponents but also probably their neighbors who have turned yes, into force yes the kuki methi uh, that strife which is there has been one of the you know concerning issues but you know interestingly uh, nishta i was in manipur soon after uh, the violence broke out and i realized that the general sense among the people irrespective of the community was mm -hmm. they wanted normalcy in their lives absolutely who you doesn't know, for, for for them it was not about who their neighbor was it was not about the caste anymore it was not about the tribe anymore it was about that quest that they had the desire to have a normal life absolutely and what better way than conducting elections because mm. election mean normalcy yes we know that elections can only be conducted when and when people are feeling normal what absolutely right yes. i mean what kind of normalcy <laughs> there is in jammu and kashmir that is again up for debate but elections you know when when polling happens it is a very um, you know heartwarming as mm. well as a very affirmative sort of uh, moment mm. because this is where people exercise their right yes, and, and those i have the visuals to, uh, Nishra, yes, quickly these are, these of, are of kiran rijuju union minister uh, going to cast his vote in fact he has just exercised his right in arunachal west this is a constituency where he won that constituency with 63% votes full frame of the visuals coming in he is uh, showing the finger telling everyone of his constituency it's a it's a constituency where the bjp is the dominant force completely and on with those visuals anishta 30 seconds to you right uh, you know um, uh, one of your uh, um, uh, correspondents from bihar is very disappointed that people haven't turned yes. uh, turned up to vote and it is very disappointing indeed and i think people need to realize it you know every politician wants to say that it is your duty to vote ye aapka kartavya hai nahi ye hamara haq hai right hai just treat it as that give the power and to can, the vote that are, has been given to we are also seeing we are also seeing anna malai he was he is the the face of the bjp the hero that uh, the bjp was looking for in tamil nadu they have found him i was on a train yatra lot of people uh, shagato uh, 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 you know were talking about uh, that 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 importance and significance of this man and in tamil nadu's context all of them uh, mr shrinivas raju was talking about anna malai the man yes yeah yeah maria i mean he's he's brought in a very unusual energy for the bjp uh, in tamil nadu you know i mean i don't think the bjp had a face in tamil nadu and you're absolutely right that uh, they have found anamalai anamalai was an ips officer as you know he was in the karnataka cadre he quit his uh, civil service job and he and then moved to tamil nadu and has worked extremely hard is extremely articulate and has tried to build the party we don't know whether his efforts are going to yield sufficient seats for the bjp but one thing is certain their vote share is going to go up significantly as a result of his effort in fact uh, the very interesting thing is that he is contesting from coimbatore hmm. and uh, coimbatore 
is a seat which uh, has sort of in the past yielded to the BJP. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean the alliance, the BJP had been in an alliance in the past there, and it's yielded to the BJP. But we'll have to wait and see if Anamalai can completely swing it. It's a tr- three-corner contest, as uh, yes. the correspondents have been mentioning. And, and, and we'll have to wait and see if Anamalai and will we'll do that. And we'll have to also and wait and see whether the youth of Tamil Nadu and youth in other states actually go to cast their vote. Because these are very, yeah. very promising visuals coming in from across India. In 21 right. states and union territories where it's the senior citizens who are, being, who, are see, uh, who are actually seen in queue. And it's also the women. And we have another woman candidate there, uh, Tamili Sai Sondarajan, contesting from uh, Chennai uh, South. And, and, and she is uh, the BJP candidate, uh, someone who was uh, the, uh, the, uh, the former uh, uh, you know, uh, governor of Telangana, now a candidate there. We, this remains our top focus here on NDTV. I would like to thank Nishta and uh, Mr. Srinivas Raju. Uh, we'll be getting uh, the news and updates on the other side. Rishika joins you.